Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, September 11th, 2013. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Ricardo Munoz. Alderman? Thank you for having me. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service of CAN-TV. This is a live and interactive show, so during the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your questions or comments. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN-TV board member. So if you have any questions for Alderman Ricardo Munoz, please call us at 312-738-1060. And we take calls in Spanish, too. <laughs> we take calls in Spanish as well, as the Alderman has just indicated. Alderman, please tell us of any developments that are happening in the summer. Yeah, no, no. Well, we, we're just finishing up a great active summer. Uh, where uh, we use, uh, my office uses the summer as a time to organize the neighborhood uh, in the forms of, you know, the baseball leagues, the soccer leagues, uh, obviously the black clubs that meet uh, during the summer to do their cleanups and to do their famous black parties. Uh, and that way neighbors, a lot of times, we use black clubs because those are very important. They're the building block of the neighborhood. And a lot of times people know each other as the owner of the red car, uh, the, the, the mom with the three kids, or the owner of the van whose alarm always goes off. We want people to know each other as Mr. Ramirez, Mr. Williams, uh, Miss Regina. Uh, that way, people feel a sense of community, and that's how. We, that's why we promote and and, and 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 try and organize these black clubs that then get together. Uh, they have back to school activities. They have black cleanups uh, in in uh, on their streets or in their alleys. Uh, they have they come and attend the caps meetings as black clubs, uh, and then of course uh, usually at the end of the summer have their celebrations with their great big black parties. And that's one of the challenges. That's one of the reasons I love my job because as an alderman, uh, I get invited to all these black parties. And at every black party, it never fails. Uh, everybody's doing their specialty dish whether it's a barbecued chicken or barbecued ribs or tacos a la mexicana or tacos al, al estilo Jalisco uh, or carnitas or enchiladas and they always want me to taste it. They always want me to have some and so I'm kind of glad that the summer's over uh, because then uh, I'll be able to go back on my uh, on my diet of not having to eat uh, five, six, eight times uh, during every Saturday during these black club activities, black parties. Uh, but they're a lot of fun uh, and that's part of the reason why I love my job. Great. Sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. um, Alderman, uh, please let's talk about a little bit about um the ward that you represent, the 22nd Ward? Yes, well, uh, the 22nd Ward is roughly bounded on the east by Kedzie Avenue, uh, on the south by Cermak Road, and on the west by the city limits, and on the south by the Stevenson Expressway. Uh, that is the current ward that I was elected in, and as a result of redistricting on the right-hand side of that visual that you're looking at is the new ward, which pretty much stayed the same, except that on the far lower left-hand corner, I picked up the neighborhoods of Leclerc, Sleepy Hollow and Vidum Park. Uh, vi very vibrant neighborhoods uh, that we have uh, in the in the new 22nd Ward and I've been spending the summer uh, basically engaging with neighbors uh, over there uh, and learning about for example I have the new Hearst Community School is over there, uh, the Leclerc Hearst Park. Uh, we also have uh, Our Lady of the Snows Church over there, and just engaging with new people, engaging with new neighbors, and and, and it's been a real, real exciting time for me uh, to introduce myself and find out uh, and, and and find out more about those neighbors in the neighborhoods of Vidum Park, Sleepy Hollow, and Leclerc Hearst. Okay, great. Uh, we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Sí, buenas tardes, con, concejal Muñoz. Buenas tardes. Este, mire, este, tengo una pregunta. Mi pregunta es, si un residente um, se queja de que no hay mucha luz en cierta cuadra, por ejemplo, en la 27 cristiana, no hay suficiente, suficiente luz, ¿cómo le hace un residente para que puedan poner más luz y alumbrar? Sí, como no. Uh, obviamente comunicarse con mi oficina para nosotros entonces pasar por ahí durante la noche para ver a ver si hay algún problema con uno de los focos o una de las luces que tal vez no esté trabajando bien uh, y luego para porque poder la, arreglarlas. Oh, perdón, porque la 27 cristiana siempre está bien oscuro y por allí um, ahí se juntan muchos pandilleros a rezar por un difunto y está muy oscuro. 
oscuro y como sí, que sí, causa eh, miedo. El, el, la, la otra razón que tal vez haya uh, así sombras o esté oscuro es porque a veces los árboles no, se están, no, no los han podado y es la responsabilidad de la ciudad entonces venir uh, y es por eso que tenemos que hacer una visita para ver si se puede podar el árbol para que no dé tanta sombra para que entonces esté más alumbrada la, la, la cuadra. Uh, her question was basically about uh, what does the neighbor have to do uh, to deal with the issue of a block being kind of dim or dark as a result of some lights not working. Uh, and I explained to her that it is our responsibility, the city's responsibility, to make sure that number one, the lights are, are functioning and first thing to do is call my office. Uh, and that way we can do a survey and figure out if part of the problem is the fact that maybe one or two of the light bulbs aren't working. And then also double check to make sure that the trees are trimmed so that they're not casting off too much of a shadow so that the light, the, so that the block can be um, lit up. Y lo importante ahí es de que se comunique con mi oficina. Uh, aquí en la pantalla va a ver el teléfono de mi oficina que es el 773-762-1771. Uh, para que lo apunte y se pueda comunicar con nosotros. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias por la llamada. Thank you for that question. Um, Alderman, um, please tell us what happened today in city, uh, city Council. Yeah, we had a city council meeting and it was uh, full of a lot of uh, activities. Uh, one was, uh, there was a tribute to retiring Alderman uh, Dick Mel. Uh, so there was, a, there was kind of like a mini roast uh, of his 38 year career. Uh, and th th that was always very engaging. But more importantly, the city council today adopted an ordinance uh, basically prohibiting uh, the carrying of weapons in establishments that uh, sell alcohol. Because as you know, the legislature adopted a, con a concealed carry legislation that will sometime soon in the near future allow for people to take out permits to carry concealed weapons in the state of Illinois. And we as a city uh, decided, the city council and with working with the mayor's office, decided that if an establishment sells alcohol, they should not be able to welcome guests who are carrying concealed weapons. Uh, as Alderman Burke is very fond of saying, uh, booze and bullets do not mix. And that's why uh, we amended the municipal law to basically require establishments that sell alcohol, these are restaurants and bars, uh, to prohibit them from allowing uh, guests who are carrying concealed, uh, concealed weapons because we, don't, we do not believe that at, a pla at an establishment where people are consuming alcohol, there should be weapons there. Uh, and, and that was one of the most uh, aggressive um, gun control laws that, that we've seen in the country. And, and we adopted it because we don't, want those, we don't want those weapons in an establishment where alcohol is being served. Um, just to follow up on that question, so would uh, the owners be able to search those uh, patrons or would they ask them? Are you those rules and regs are being de uh, are going to be developed by the police department and <clears throat> but it is clear in the in the ordinance that the establishment will be required to at least post a sign that says concealed carry weapons are prohibited on these premises. Okay, Thank you Alderman on mm -hmm. that update. Uh, we have a another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening. Good uh, evening. Question concerning uh, another, I believe, an ordinance you guys passed uh, today concerning littering from a car. I know that uh, driving around the city, it's one of the things that's one of my biggest pet peeves is seeing people with whatever just throwing it out the, out the window. But it looks like there might be a more steep fines for these people. But my question is, is how serious should Chicago drivers take this? I mean, are they, is this really going to be enforced? Well, uh, very seriously, because what we've what what happened today uh, with the adoption of the new litter ordinance is that the fines were increased from a uh, fifty dollar fine to a two hundred fifty dollar fine, and uh, the police department was now it now has a discretion of impounding the vehicle uh, if the uh, if if they seem fit, uh, because at at any given point, when anybody is throwing away their hamburger wrapper or their pop can or and, and any litter outside the car, uh, we should be able to enforce the law and basically uh, prevent that from happening. Obviously, we'd like not to have to fine anybody, and we'd like for everybody to follow the law and not litter from their vehicles. Uh, but the, in some cases, in this case, we're trying to uh, modify behavior by increasing the fines. Thank you, call, thank you, caller, for that question. 
Um, Alderman, please tell us about any new developments that happened in the 22nd Ward. Yeah, we've got a couple of things going on in the Ward. Uh, now that we finished off the summer, uh, we're starting to have the conversation about what's going to happen to the corner of 31st and Kedzie. 31st and Kedzie is an 11-acre site uh, formerly owned by the Chicago Board of Education. It, it was what used to be called the Washburn Trade School, and for the last four years, four years ago it was demolished, and it's an empty lot now. So we have 11 acres right in the middle of Little Village, and what we're proposing and uh, working on is the development of a new hospital, of a new St. Anthony Hospital, uh, because uh, the building that they're in is well over 90 years old over at 19th and Sacramento, and they want to build a new state-of-the-art facility uh, for their services with St. Anthony Hospital and a park, a public park. Uh, all on one campus uh, with some community amenities uh, and also some uh, some retail uh, on the first floor and that way we can put uh, what right now is an 11 acre empty lot on 31st and Kedzie uh, which looks pretty dilapidated looks pretty bad uh, we're looking to invest a little over 400 million dollars in development with the new hospital some new commercial and this new park that will benefit uh, the entire neighborhood of Little Village and we're really excited about it because it's it's a development project that's engaging the neighborhood uh, where neighbors have been uh, participating in charrettes uh, in public meetings where we're asking them, what would you like to see here? Folks have said, look, we'd like to see a community banquet hall. Uh, where, where where folks can host their weddings and their quinceañeras. Uh, we'd like to see uh, a senior center, uh, uh, an indoor pool, uh, and all those things are being incorporated into making this project, the project a gem uh, for the Little Village community, and, and we're really excited about that. Thank you, Alderman. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, um I wanted to uh, introduce myself. Um, I'm Carol Harold. I'm a member of a uh, Chicago group called the Committee for Public Access. And my signature was one of many on a letter that we sent out um, about a month or so ago uh, thanking the aldermen for their support when um, RCN came up for their uh, cable franchise renewal. And we got a very good uh, mm -hmm. response from the city council. So we wanted to thank you all, and we wanted to get your feedback on the upcoming uh, renewal that's going to be uh, taking place for Comcast. And we're concerned that they uh, come up to the standards set by RCN, that they are just as good as and or better than. Uh, we want to maintain um, an atmosphere of um, independence and good funding. We want CAN TV programs like this wonderful political forum program to be able to be well funded and continue for the public. I appreciate your feedback. Thanks so much. No, thank you for the call. I mean, it's always a pleasure to be able to work on behalf of someone like a CAN TV and the great board members like Monica that help us basically provide this sort of access. Uh, to non-for-profits, to schools, uh, to community organizations that can get the uh, can get the word out on whatever it is they want to talk about, whether it's immigration reform, uh, health reform, uh, just uh, community-based programming is what we need more of. And um, I am a huge supporter of CAN TV, and the, the part of the reason that's why I'm here, uh, because I want to make sure that the public continues to have access to some of this programming and some of this training. Because the other thing that uh, folks sometimes forget is the training that's provided to, 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 to the, on the technical side uh, by the studios here at CAN TV is something that uh, creates careers. And that's why uh, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be a supporter of CAN TV, and I want to thank you for that call. Thank you, Caller, for that question. Alderman, um, you, you talked about city council. Um, is there any legislation that you're pushing or? Yes, uh, another thing that happened today in city council was uh, a group of aldermen and I, uh, I, I believe it was a total of 13 or 14 of us, uh, introduced uh, a resolution uh, calling for uh, there to be a ballot question, putting on the ballot on whether or not the Chicago Board of Education should be an elected school board. Uh, some of us believe uh, that the uh, school board should be elected so, it's, so, so it can be held more accountable to the voters. Uh, some of us have disagreed with some of the more um, 
recent policies of the Board of Education, namely the closure of those 50-some grammar schools. Uh, I was opposed, I personally was opposed to the closing of those schools. Uh, in my ward, uh, I represent a ward that has 14 grammar schools, and one of them was closed, Paderewski, over at Cermak in Lawndale, and uh, we deeply, we cared deeply about trying to maintain that school, trying to improve it, trying to make sure that the students it serves uh, was appropriate and adequate, uh, but the Board of Education decided to, to close it. And one of the things that we did today was we introduced this resolution that would, that is attempting to place on next March's ballot the question of whether or not the Chicago School Board should be an elected school board. Uh, and uh, that happened also today in City Council. Okay, great. Um, Alderman, and if, if that were to pass, um, then what would happen afterwards? Well, this resolution uh, would place the question on the ballot. So then okay. what would happen is at the next, at the March 18th primary next year, okay. uh, the ballot would have that question uh, as a referendum. Okay. Uh, and then depending on how, what the, what, what the results of the ballot is, then we can take that and go to the state legislature to try and amend the state law to allow for the creation of an elected school board. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Alderman, um, we talked about uh, the school closings, um, and you mentioned one uh, closing your ward. Um, there are also the safe passage. Um, can you talk to, talk about that? Yeah, uh, as a result of the school closings, and as a result of uh, these students not being able to go to their neighborhood school, which is one or two blocks away, and now having to go to a different school, which is four or five or six blocks away, uh, the Board of Education created this program called Safe Passage, where they hired over 600 community members to basically place them as crossing guards slash monitors uh, to make sure that the children that are walking those extra four or five blocks uh, are, are, are safe. And part of the challenge, and, and for example, in my ward, uh, just last week, a crossing guard just didn't show up on a corner of 27th and Costner. And when I inquired uh, to the police department as to why this corner no longer has a crossing guard, which we know it needs because of the traffic on Costner and 27th and Zapata School being just half a block away, I was told that we haven't been able to hire crossing guards in well over two years and that there is a uh, limit on the number of crossing guards that are out there because we haven't hired any in the last two years. And I was just flabbergasted. I was you know, upset that we ha can't hire crossing guards, but we're hiring all these safe passage workers. Uh, I think we need to revisit our priorities, and I talked to uh, the police department just yesterday about that. Uh, but safe passage is an attempt to try and give parents a level of comfort for their for their children that are walking those extra four or five blocks. Uh, I oppose the school closing, so I don't like the idea. Uh, but whatever we can do to make the schools safer, to make the routes safer, is is something that we welcome because obviously, uh, with the gang violence uh, being so prevalent in some of our neighborhoods, we want to make sure that our students are safe. Thank you, Alderman. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yeah, I was talking to a co-worker today, and they told me that uh, the mayor, mayor is thinking of renaming Stony Island, I believe. Is that correct? Uh, there was a news item in the news this morning where there were... Um, there was going to be a proposal on renaming, I believe it's Stony Island, uh, to the Arthur Brazier Way uh, Drive. Uh, Bishop Arthur Brazier is a, a former, uh, is a great leader, uh, was a great leader, uh, who was very active in Chicago, uh, but uh, I'm not sure whether, it, it didn't pass in city council today, so it, it wasn't adopted, and so we uh, are just waiting to see who's going to propose that. Thank you, uh, caller, for that question. Uh, we have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? And our phone lines are really r ringing up. <laughs> oh, hi, Alderman. I had a question about something you just said related to the school board and the possibility of um, being able to have an, on the ballot the, the opportunity to have an elected school board. Um, I'd heard that we tried to have that on the ballot this past November, um, but I didn't see it on my ballot, and I was curious to know, you know what happened with that and what steps would be taken 
maybe in the future to ensure that Chicagoans will indeed have a voice in whether or not we have an elected public school board. Yeah, in, in, in the last election, uh, the question of whether or not the school board should be elected was on 10% of the precincts only in the, in, in the wards where uh, neighborhood organizations and friendly aldermen like myself, I had it in the 22nd ward, um, supported the idea of putting it on the ballot. Uh, what we're trying to do, what, what we introduced today is a resolution to put it on the ballot citywide uh, to give all city residents the opportunity. And just to give you a sense of how it, uh, how the results went, uh, in the 22nd Ward, 92% uh, of the ballots cast said that yes, the school board should be an elected school board. Uh, and uh, citywide, and that those 10% of the precincts that it was on citywide, uh, it came back 80% uh, as a yes that it should be an elected school board. So what we're trying to do right now is put it on the ballot in all uh, 2,600 precincts in the city of Chicago so that every Chicagoan gets to voice his or her opinion on whether or not the school board should be an elected school board so that we can take that information down to Springfield and lobby for a change in state law uh, to create an elected school board. Thank you, caller, for that question. We actually have a question from Maria on Twitter. KNTV is on uh, Twitter as well. Uh, regarding the park you mentioned 10 minutes ago, when might that be completed? Well, the St. Anthony project is going to be a huge project. It's 11 acres, like I said, over $300 million. And we're in the process of raising the money right now. Uh, hopefully, we plan on trying to start construction of the site uh, in summer or fall of 2015. I mean 2014, so that it can be completed by the fall of 2015. Uh, so uh, part of what we're trying to do right now is raise the funding necessary to pay for all the components. And just to give you an idea of how complex and complicated the, the project is, uh, it's, part of it is uh, about four and a half, five acres is going to be a public park. Uh, part of it is going to be St. Anthony, a private hospital. And then uh, the other part is kind of like a community center slash uh, commercial site where we're going to use the proceeds from, from, from the rents from the commercial side to pay for the community amenities that the neighborhood wants. Uh, the stuff that I mentioned, like that pool, uh, like that senior center, uh, like that banquet hall. Uh, so, it's, so, so hopefully uh, we're looking to start construction by uh, 2014. Thank you, uh, thank you Maria, uh, from yeah, we're, Twitter. We're on social media with Twitter. Thank you for that question. Um, Alderman, we just have a few minutes left. Is, mm -hmm. is there any final uh, words that you'd like to tell to the public? Well, uh, just uh, to remember that uh, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. And I say that jokingly, but very seriously also. Uh, I, I started with a conversation about black clubs and uh, wanted to go back and just reiterate to people how important it is for there to be the fabric, uh, the network of neighbors that basically seek to improve their neighborhood uh, by just knowing each other, having a phone tree uh, by, so that people can call each other and check in on neighborhood concerns. Uh, that's partly why I love my job, uh, because I get to promote black, uh, black clubs and, 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 and neighborly activities. And to, to stay involved, uh, stay in touch with the aldermen, and make sure that uh, we all know what's on your mind. Thank you, Alderman, for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, viewers, for your questions. Our telephone t technician for today has been Steve. Political Forum is brought to you as a public service uh, for KNTV. Uh, I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares. Please join us next Wednesday for another edition of Political Forum. Have a good evening.